In this video, I will show you Google's Image FX tool that you can use to generate images by entering text. Let's get started. So here I am at the Google Labs page. You can see the address here, but another way to get to the same place is just do a search for Google Image FX. That'll take you to the same location. Now, once you're here, just sign in with your Google account. So I'll click sign in a couple of times. I can opt in to these things if I want to. And then I have to agree to the privacy policy and then click agree to continue. Okay, now that I've done that, I have access to this image FX image generator. And there's a sample prompt here, and I could just tap tab to enter that in and try it out. In fact, let's try that. I'll click create, and Google's image FX tool is using artificial intelligence to try to create this image that's described here. It's going to give me four results. That way I can pick the one I like the best. And here we have the four options. You can click on one of the options to see it a little bigger, hopefully to help you choose the one that you want to keep. Let's say this is the one I want to keep. I can just click copy and then I could paste it into, let's say, a Google slideshow. Just control V to paste. And there I have an AI image and I'm putting it to use in a Google slideshow. Now, instead of copy pasting the AI image, I could have downloaded it just by clicking this button. It puts a copy of that AI image on my computer. And then, of course, I could insert it into Google Slides or PowerPoint or Canva, whatever you want to do. If I just want to share this image with others, I could click here and then choose copy share link and then just paste that link into an email or post it on a website or on social media and other people will be able to see my image. Now, there are many other AI image generators out there. This is one of the best, but there are many others. So let's look at a couple of things that make this image FX AI image generator maybe a little bit unique. Notice what it has here. It says still of a food fight, but there's a drop down here. I could change it from a food fight to, let's say, a water balloon fight in the middle of a restaurant. How about middle of a beach? and they're throwing food everywhere instead of mid-air food how about food in the air click create and it's going to redo those images based on the changes i just made so that's kind of a nice feature where you can just make some adjustments just by clicking a drop down arrow and changing up those options so now you can see it's a water balloon fight but it's also still a food fight Okay, I want to start over. So I'm just gonna go back to image effects and I'll launch it again. And I'm gonna change up the prompt here. I'm gonna type my own this time. Let's say I want a fierce looking dragon in a giant cavern. The dragon is sprawled on a mountain of Doritos. All right, let's click create and see the results. Notice the image FX has already identified a potential adjustment I might want to make. Instead of a giant cavern, it could be a large forest or a vast desert. But here are the results, and I think they turned out amazing. There's another one and another one. Now, after you've generated your AI images, notice that you can adjust the look and feel of the images. You can go sketchy. You could go with 35 millimeter and you can stack these options. Sometimes it can create kind of a weird effect when you select options that kind of conflict in a way. But let's try this out and see how it turns out. Okay, so because those were conflicting options that I chose, notice that these images do have a bit of a sketch look to them. But then in other areas, they don't look like a sketch. But these are some nice options that you can try, you can adjust them, and see how they affect the final result. So I hope you enjoy trying out Image FX from Google Labs. In the meantime, thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it to be helpful. If you did, please like, follow, and subscribe. And when you do, click the bell and you'll be notified when I post another video. If you'd like to support my channel, the best way to do that is to become a channel member. But you could also support me through my Patreon account. Or you could click the thanks button below the video, or you could buy channel merch. And you'll see information about those options in the description below the video. Speaking of supporting the channel, I want to say thank you to all of my super techie channel supporters. Thank you so much for all you do to support the channel. Thanks to you, I'm able to keep making these videos on weekends and in the evening. So I want to say thank you so much.